political leaders in Northern Ireland have condemned the rioting that's raged in Belfast for six nights, but criticised each other about the underlying causes. Police were attacked, petrol bombs were thrown, and a bus was set on fire last night. In total, 55 police officers have been injured in the violence. The conflict in Northern Ireland goes back to the late 1960s. It's centred on religion and the area's status. Unionist parties, who represent mainly the Protestant community, believe it should remain part of the United Kingdom. But nationalist parties, who are mainly Roman Catholic, believe it should leave the UK and unite with the Republic of Ireland. A conflict between the two communities, known as the Troubles, started in the 60s and cost the lives of more than 3,500 people. On the 10th of April 1998, the Good Friday Agreement was signed between the UK government, the Irish government and Northern Ireland political parties. It set up a power-sharing government in Belfast with the Republic having some say in areas like farming and health. The following month, a referendum was held on both sides of the Irish border for people to decide whether or not they wanted the agreement. The result was a resounding yes, and peace was restored. Chris Page has this report on Wednesday night's riots in West Belfast. The barrier, which is commonly known as a peace line, was anything but peaceful last night. The wall was built many years ago to try to stop clashes between politically divided communities in West Belfast. But there was trouble on both sides as crowds threw petrol bombs, fireworks and bricks. The violence began on the loyalist Shankle Road where protesters had gathered. A bus was hijacked and set on fire. There were no passengers on board but the driver was said to be very shaken. Then, across the Peace Wall in the Springfield Road area, Republican youths rioted. Community representatives tried to calm the situation. It's sad to see this. We're, we're trying to appeal to these young people that this isn't the answer. They shouldn't be engaging in violence, sectarian violence. Uh, it's only a matter of time, I, I feel, it, before someone gets seriously hurt. People in Northern Ireland had hoped that scenes of destruction like this belonged well in the past. But today, as the debris and damage from last night has cleaned up, the question is, does the violence of the last week have the potential to escalate? My appeal to those that wish to organise uh, uh, disorder is not to do it. Um, it will be the subject of investigation and it serves no purpose. Uh, and see, Nobody wants to see the scenes that we have seen last night. We now have a new generation um, of children and young people who have been exposed to things that they won't have seen previously. Understanding Order 11, I have summoned the Assembly to meet today. Police briefed ministers in the devolved government this morning and the Stormont Assembly returned early from its Easter break to discuss the issues. There can be no place in our society for violence or the threat of violence and it must stop. Just as it was wrong in the past and was never justified, so it is wrong now and cannot be justified. As political leaders we must stand united in appealing to all concerned to refrain from further threats or use of violence and recognise that it's only through democratic politics that we can solve our problems and concerns. Both Boris Johnson and the Irish Prime Minister Micheál Martin have condemned the violence. It's been the most sustained period of unrest on the streets in Northern Ireland for some time. Only small areas have been affected so far, but many people in this part of the UK are feeling a new and yet familiar sense of concern. Chris Page, BBC News, Belfast. Well, earlier I spoke to Jonathan Powell, former British chief negotiator on Northern Ireland at the time of the Good Friday Agreement. Here's what he had to say about the violence. Well, actually, the riots have been simmering for some time. The riots are engaged in by criminal elements who are using very young children, as young as 12 and 13. But the underlying political problems really date back to Brexit. The problem was Brexit was always going to hurt one community's rights. Uh, if we leave the EU, there had to be a border somewhere. It could be on the island of Ireland, which would hurt nationalists and republicans, or in the Irish Sea, which would hurt unionists. And that's led to unionists getting angry, particularly because the implementation of it has led to real problems in terms of supermarkets and supplies coming in. So it's coming from that, and then it's coming from the DUP, the unionist party, who called on the head of the police to resign 
after he allowed a Republican funeral to go ahead despite the COVID rules. So you've got this simmering tension and it's very sad to see this kind of violence on the street again. I mean, this is uh, obviously a very complex situation and you know all about the, the troubles uh, all too well. I, I mean, are we seeing a situation where we're rolling back to the past? No, I don't think this will take us back into the troubles, but I do think that politicians are playing with matches. This is the time of year in Northern Ireland when as the evenings grow longer, you can get into sustained rioting. We often have in the past. And now you have the two communities attacking each other again, which happened last night. Uh, this could take off in a very ugly way. I really do think it's incumbent on the political leaders in Northern Ireland to come together and to actually do the right thing to stop this. Uh, they can do that if they're united. It's also time for the British government to get involved along with the Irish government and use their good offices to start dialogue uh, rather than allowing this violence to take place. Boris Johnson's taken a week before he's even commented on it. Uh, the Irish Prime Minister has been anxious to take action. I hope the British government will take the responsibility seriously. I, I suppose the, the focus has been on, on the pandemic, but once the pandemic fades, uh, you know, the focus will have to come on the long-term effects of, of Brexit again. It will. Uh, Brexit is going to be a problem for Northern Ireland. It always was going to be so. John Major and Tony Blair pointed this out during the referendum campaign. We now have the Northern Ireland Protocol, that we have the border in the Irish Sea, and it's going to have to be made to work. And I think it's very important the British government engages responsibly with the EU and making that work, and that the EU is flexible in the way that it makes some of these regulations work. The British government has approached this in the wrong way, as making it an argument with the EU, whereas actually they have a common interest in facilitating this and ensuring it does not cause problems. I, I, I mean, do you feel that the political leaders and the police aren't doing enough? I think the police are doing the best that they can. It is very difficult in these circumstances to deal with rioting and to deal with some of the loyalists who've been stirring it up, who are actually basically criminals. Uh, so I do have a lot of sympathy for, for the police. As I say, my problem is that the politicians are taking really dangerous steps. This is a time of year when we know there can be trouble in Northern Ireland, and they are literally playing with matches. We're the gas leaking all around us, and I do hope they're going to stop and actually try and calm things down. How is the British government widely viewed? Well, the British government is supported by one half of the community, by the, by the unionist community, who want to remain in the United Kingdom and dislike by the other half. But the problem with Brexit was a majority of people in Northern Ireland voted to remain uh, in the EU, a, a large majority. And so they have, have been forced out of the EU against their will. And that's part of the trouble we're facing in Northern Ireland now. I mean, when you say the political leaders are, are, are playing with fire here, what exactly are they doing and saying, or do you feel that they're not doing and saying enough? I do think it's a wrong thing for Arlene Foster, who's the DUP leader, to be demanding that the chief constable, the head of the police, resign at this stage. Uh, we do not want the police being discombobulated right at the beginning of this difficult uh, season. We need some stability in the police and everyone supporting the police. And I think it's a terrible mistake to try and undermine him. What we're seeing, though, as you say, uh, is frankly young children and, and, and teenagers out on the streets. It is. This is actually much younger than we've seen before. The dissident Republicans, so the terrorist group on the other side, have been using youngish teenagers uh, to attack people, and that caused uh, the journalists to be shot uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, this time it's young loyalists, so from the, the Protestant population, and they're being used by these older men who are basically criminals to go out on the street and create this trouble. It's a very disturbing new feature. Yeah, I, I mean, and I want to talk a little bit more about that. If that is something that we've seen them use a, a, as a tool, again, why isn't the police able to crack down on that? It's very difficult. These organisations are almost like mafia-type organisations. They have a hold over the community. They can threaten people if they release information. So the police find it very hard to crack down on this kind of crime. I think there needs to be part of an effort to reach out to the people in those communities who want to take politics. They haven't been represented politically since the sad death of their leader, David Irvine, who played a key role in the negotiations of the Good Friday Agreement and subsequently. So they don't have a political voice. They need to be engaged in dialogue. And these are very deprived areas. The lowest level of educational achievement anywhere in Europe. 